your heart, verse 1 says, be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. These are words of great comfort. Uh, we hear this scripture normally in a funeral setting, but these words are of great comfort no matter what your situation may be. These should be words of great comfort coming from Jesus the Christ. He says, let not your heart be troubled. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. I want us to just back up very briefly and get a good running start because I want you to see what would cause Jesus to say what he said at this particular point, at this particular time, and, and how he said it, and the reason behind him saying it. If you go back up to uh, verse, uh, uh, excuse me, John chapter 13, and you look at verse 36, uh, Jesus had just talked to them about some troubling times that were uh, uh, headed their way. He, he basically said, uh, uh, brothers, uh, it's about to get rough. Jesus said, it's, it's about to get tough. Unlike anything you have ever seen. Mm -hmm. Well, he has set the stage. Mm -hmm. He said, it's about to get bad, guys. It's about to get bad. And I know that they had been through some turbulent times and some difficult situations, but nothing that they had ever seen or could have imagined was about to come upon them. So in verse 36 of John chapter 13, it says, Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whether thou goest, Jesus answered him, whether I go, thou canst not follow me, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus said, Jesus answered him, wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me three times. Mm -hmm. He had just talked to them about what would befall him by way of going to the cross. Mm -hmm. And Peter made this bold and, and brave statement said, Lord, wherever you go, I will come with you. I will be there. But Jesus said, Peter, I need you to slow your road just a little bit. He said, I need you to slow down, Peter. Because, Peter, before this night is over with, before the rooster crows three times, two times, you're going to deny me three times. Amen. And because of what he had shared with them, then he said, let not your heart, regardless of all that I have laid out before you, Regardless of all that I have burdened you with and let you know what's going to take place, he says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. And he goes on to say, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Don't you, don't you like them? He said, I will come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not the moment we have a representative, mm -hmm. but Jesus says, I will come again. Yeah. And receive you unto myself. And where I am, Peter, because you said you want to go with me, mm -hmm. there you may be also. He says, and whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know way. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me but by my Father. And then he says this to them. He says, if you had known me, he says, if you had, now this is very important here, he says, if you had known me, says, if you had known me, he said, you should have known my father also, and from henceforth know ye him 
and have seen him. Now, here's a very interesting part of this. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be all that we need. <laughs> I appreciate everything that you've done, Lord, up to this time. But if, if you show us the Father, I think we will be sufficiently supplied. Mm -hmm. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Here's my title. If you don't know Jesus by now, come on. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Jesus by now, and watch how Jesus says, in verse 9, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? Mm -hmm. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, mm -hmm. and how says thou then, show us the Father? If you don't know Christ by now, hmm. I was giving Sister uh, Meadows my titles yesterday so she could put them in the book. And when I wrote it on a piece of paper, I normally email it to her. But my computer was having one of the days yesterday, so I didn't get a chance to do that. So I said, well, let me write it down. So I handed the paper to her. Is she in here? And she read it. She said, you don't know by now. She thought I didn't know the she, she thought I didn't know the title of the sermon yet. Yeah. She was misreading it. <laughs> she thought I was saying I don't know yet. <laughs> I said, no, 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 that's my title. She said, you don't know by now? I said, sister, you gotta read what it said. <laughs> if you don't know Christ by now, yes. Amen. That's my lesson. And as I close here, here's my lesson this morning. If you don't know Christ by now, hmm. these men had traveled with Jesus for approximately three and a half years doing his ministry. Hmm. And then Thomas, uh, excuse me, Philip was asking this question or made this profound statement. And Jesus came back with, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me? If you don't know Jesus by now, I'm not going to do Teddy, that's so sweet. I know some of y'all grew up on Teddy, amen. Teddy yes, if you don't know me by now, you will know. If you don't know Jesus by now, you may never get the opportunity to know him because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. amen. So I said, what you waiting on? If you don't know Jesus by now, these few verses say a lot about who Jesus Christ was and who Jesus Christ is today. Not only who he was, but who he is today. This says a lot about him. That's right. After setting out to, to ease the minds of his disciples about the events that would surely unfold and, and some things that they had to look forward to in the future, Philip made this profound statement. He said, Lord, show us the Father, and that's good enough. Mm -hmm. In other words, Philip said, yeah, Lord, I, I hear what you're saying, but we need more. If you don't know Jesus by now, mm. what are you waiting on? And if you are a child of God and have been for years and years and years and you still don't know Jesus by now, it's possible that you may never, never know him. And I like the way Jesus handled this situation. Jesus didn't do like us and go ballistic or show disappointment in Philip what he had said. Jesus simply, he took this opportunity to teach. Right. Now you have to understand that there was just a mild rebuke in the words of Jesus, but he didn't run Philip off and belittle him and make him feel bad. He simply said, have I 
been so long with you and you still don't know me? Let's take a lesson from Jesus. When someone makes a statement or asks us a question, we have to be able to answer and take that opportunity to teach them, to bring them along to where they need to be spiritually. Let's take that lesson from Jesus. Said, Show us the Father, and it suffices us. And Jesus said, Have I been so long with you? And as I close here, I want you to understand that Jesus is coming into the world, and, and the time that he spent with his disciples, uh, that he, he manifested or made known the Father throughout the entire time that he walked the streets of Jerusalem with them, and as he walked through Samaria with them, and as he came upon the woman by the well with them, and as he talked to uh, uh, blind Bartimaeus, and as he talked to the kids and told them to come down out the tree, all of that time they were in the very presence of the Father. Amen. But still they said, show us the Father. Yes. And she said, all this time I've been with you, and you still don't know me? The whole time Jesus was with them, they had the Father right in front of them. So it stands to reason that as the disciples, if they had a full and proper apprehension or understanding of who Jesus was, then they should have known who God the Father. Sometimes, unfortunately, you ask people, about God, they can't tell you anything about God. Mm -hmm. Now, I even go so far to say sometimes a Christian may be asked about God, and they say they have been baptized in the blood and the water and contacted the blood and risen and walked in the news of life, and they can't tell who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. We need to do better, amen? Amen. We should have no problem explaining or telling someone who Jesus is. Yes, yes. So it stands to reason that if they had a full and prompt apprehension of Jesus, they thought they had to see the Father <laughs> to know the Father. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have been in my company, you have seen the Father. If you have hung out with me, you have seen the Father. If you have associated with me, you have seen the Father. He said, have you seen the Father? Right. Jesus said, right now, I'm more concerned that you have been with me and don't even seem to know who I am. Mm -hmm. right. But we need to know who Jesus is. Yes. And this should never be the case for a child of God that we walk our entire life saying that we are a child of God, professing that we are a child of God, and yet we don't know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus by now, Amen. something's going on. Amen. Something's going on. Amen. If you are a child of God, but you can't say that you know Jesus, something is wrong. Amen. And I believe that we should put more emphasis on knowing Jesus. Yes. Man, some of us are so full of knowledge. Hmm. And that's okay. But what do we know about Jesus? Sometimes we are in company with a person or individuals. Sometimes we may hang out with someone. Sometimes we may associate with someone. Sometimes we may know of someone. Sometimes we are aware of, have heard of, but we'll never come to know the person. Are we like that with Jesus? You know, I've heard about Jesus. I'm familiar uh, with uh, stories about Jesus. I know of Jesus. I associate with Jesus. But I'll never come to know Jesus if you don't know Christ by now. Tomorrow is not promised. Amen. Make up in your mind today. Yes. And this takes humility. Mm -hmm. It takes a spirit of humility that I have to humble myself and say, I don't know. I'm reminded in Acts chapter 8. There was a man, he 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 
was a, he was a uh, treasurer under Candace, queen of Ethiopia. And he was riding along in his chariot, and the man of God ran and joined himself with him. And he was reading, and the man said, understand this guy what thou readest. He said, how can I accept? He said, I don't know. He said, I'm reading it, but I'm not understanding. He, he humbled, listen, he humbled himself. Amen. He humbled himself. He was willing to say, you know what? I really don't understand this. Can you help me? Yeah. And he started at the same scripture from the time preached unto him, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus by now, if you don't know Christ by now, then it's imperative, it's of the highest importance that today is your day. That's right. Today, not tomorrow, because tomorrow may never come, but today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. If you don't know Jesus, now's the time. Amen. Why you say that, preacher? One thing about tomorrow that I know. I can't tell you anything about tomorrow except for one thing. In love this, you can see the future. I can't see the future, but I can tell you one thing about tomorrow that's, that's I can guarantee you this. It's not promised. Amen. It ain't promised. I can tell you about yesterday and last week, but tomorrow, that elusive tomorrow, when I'm going to get my life right tomorrow, when I'm going to go to my brother or sister that I have not spoken to in 40 years, and tomorrow I'm going to go and apologize to them. I'm going to go and reconcile my relationship with my mother. My wife and I, tomorrow, we are going to get back together. My children, tomorrow, I'm going to make up with them. I'm going to do all of this, but it's not promise. Amen. Amen. That elusive hmm. tomorrow, it's not promise. All we have is today. And we can understand that, then we should also understand that I cannot say tomorrow I'm going to obey the gospel of Christ because it's not promised. It's not promised. Yeah. Right. Right. If you don't know Christ by now, if you don't know Christ by now, let me close. I'm done. We have to know who Christ is. Unfortunately, we are hanging out with people who we'll keep coming with them and all those things and we'll never <coughs> truly come to know them. Unfortunately, we do the same thing with Jesus. And to know God, it is necessary to see him in how he was revealed by Jesus Christ. How Jesus Christ made him known to the world through his life. What we see in Christ, he says, Philip, if you've seen my father, you've seen me. How is that possible? Because we know that no man has seen God. That's what God's word teaches us. We understand no man has seen God. Remember, Moses said, I won't see it. And God said, no, you can't see it. I'll let you see the back. And he passed by the mountain. And all Moses saw was the back. But still, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father. How is that possible? What we see in Christ manifests by way of love. Mm -hmm. What we see in Christ manifests by way of compassion. What we see in Christ manifests in the way of mercy, forgiveness, all these things, judgment, wrath, all those things that we see in Christ. Amen. We see the Father. So we said, show me the Father. That's good enough. Y'all have seen it. However, if you don't know me, you haven't seen my father. If you want to see the father this morning, you got to see Jesus first. Because remember earlier he said, no man comes to the father but by me. No man has access to the father but by me. You can't just bum rush your way up and down. Amen. You can't just bully your way. You have to come through me, Jesus said. So if you want to see the father, and we always talk this thing about Seeing the one who's love of Jesus, when we all get to heaven and all that stuff and everything, and we gotta go to Jesus. Mm -hmm. right, right. You can't end around Jesus to get to the Father to get to heaven. Amen. So if you're here this morning, if you don't know Christ by right now, what are you waiting on? And please don't tell me tomorrow. <laughs> well, I ain't made nothing else plain here. The plain this morning. We know tomorrow ain't coming. Amen. So please don't sell business. Well, bitch, I'll do it tomorrow. I tell you, you've been asleep the whole time. Everybody's asleep. 
Anybody wake up now? Okay, look at the neighbor and tell them to wake up. Tomorrow's not promised. All we have is today. What we see in Christ, his love, his compassion, his mercy, his forgiveness, his character, his disposition, his works, all of these show us the nature of God the Father. If you don't know Christ by now, what are you waiting on? If you say you're a child of God this morning, but you have not manifest Christ in your life, do you really know him? Are you really showing people what Christ looks like? <coughs> do people have to really see Christ to see Christ? Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Remember, Philip said, show us the Father. But Jesus said, do you really have to see the Father to see the Father? Do people really have to see Christ, do they? To see Christ? If I am in Christ, I am a child of God, I am clothed in Christ, I have been baptized into Christ, I am a representative, I am an ambassador. Do people really have to see Christ to see Christ? Or should they be able to see him in us? Amen. Here this morning. Now the child of God draws to come by being obedient to the gospel of Christ. Understand this simple thing, that Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary. That's right. He died for you and for me. He died on that cross, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. That's the good news, that's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the good news. That's right. How does one become a child of God? Hmm. First verse 15, 1 through 4, he says that the scripture teaches about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach this news, this gospel to every creature. He that believes he is baptized shall be saved. How does one become saved from hearing that story? They have to obey that story. Romans 6, uh, Romans 6, uh, 16. You obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. You have to obey this story. How in the world, Brother Bishop, do I obey that? You see, Jesus died <coughs> on the cross. If you're not a child of God, you're dead in trespass and sin. The Bible says it right there. Amen. Ephesians 2 2. You're dead in trespass and sin. If you are not a child of God, you're dead in trespass and sin, and anything that's dead needs to be what? Buried. But notice this, you get to rise back up. Yeah. That's the good thing about that bird. Mm -hmm. You get to come back up like Jesus did. Jesus rose from the grave. We are to rise from the water grave baptism, and when we rise, we are received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We rise, walk in the of life, we we'll add to the blood, law, church of Christ. And then we have to be a faithful unto death. You hear that story, you have to believe it, have a change of mind. It's called repentance. Whatever you have been taught, been a part of, it's time to let it go. And don't tell me you're going to let it go tomorrow. That's right. If you can guarantee me that you will let that go tomorrow because you know there's a tomorrow, then we can discuss that. But tomorrow is not promised, people. Amen. Brothers, sisters, friends, tomorrow is not promised. Today, now is the supper time, it's all that we have. Have a change of mind. It's called repentance. Be willing to confess the same thing that you did in Acts chapter 8, that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then don't fight against baptism. Because if baptism was not important, it wouldn't have been in the Bible. Right. Amen. It wouldn't have been there. Amen. Too many examples showing the importance of baptism and its connection to our salvation to not be important. Amen. You can't just weigh that out. You can't just say, no, no, you can't do it, if you are honest. Go to the water grave baptism, have your sins washed away, rise, walk in the of life. Be faithful unto death, Jesus says, I'll be your crown of life. If you're here this morning, you're not a child of God, we want you to come and be added to the blood of the church of Christ. This is one you read about in the Bible, the one he's come back for, it's his bride, it's his wife. What are you waiting on? Don't say tomorrow. Please, don't say tomorrow. Whatever you do, don't say tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow is what? Not promised. Not promised. And if you're here this morning, your child of God is falling by the wayside for whatever reason, do you really know Jesus? Do you really know Jesus like you should know him? Come back home this morning if you're falling by the wayside. 
I'm so glad I know him. We want you to come as we stand and sing this song. You know? 67. 